Uh, and uh, again, just to reiterate, this is only as good and as strong as the seriousness and substantive effort you put into it. So in a real negotiation, it's not a joke telling session, it's no kidding around, it's no insults, it's serious business by sovereign state governments. Okay? So uh, I turn it over to whoever it is I turn it over to. Identify right. yourself. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bruno Khan. I'm the director of Germany's Federal Intelligence Service. Uh, we gathered here obviously today to discuss a peaceful resolution to uh, reach the terms of the West to be considered in terms of the JCPOA. Uh, now, as a member of uh, the German Republic, we occupy any position in this regard, and we obviously have strong economic ties to uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran, while at the same time having the best interest in preventing escalation of nuclear weapons development. Uh, and with our own first-hand experience, we see how quickly these types of situations can become a problem for the world community. Uh, we are committed, as we hope you all are as well, uh, to resolving this amicably and quickly. So as a moderator for these talks, I will ensure each representative from the different countries is allowed his or her time to speak. Uh, you all, the four ministers, should have the agenda, and I will emphasize and re-emphasize throughout these talks that the timeline provided without transition time is a maximum. So I would implore you all to speak as succinctly as possible, which will allow for additional and what is hopefully productive uh, conversations between us all. And so we will start with opening statements from each country, beginning with the United States. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for volunteering to help run the summit today. And I want to thank all the members of the 5 Plus One uh, meeting here today. As you know, the United States has chosen to not recertify the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action regarding the nuclear program of the state of Iran. We've asked you here today to discuss a new path forward. It is our belief that the current terms of the JCPOA agreement are not enough for stability in the Middle East region. I stand before you today to call for tightening restrictions on enrichment capabilities and research, as well as increasing the period that this agreement is binding, further pushing the specter of a functioning Iranian nuclear weapons program further to the distant future. However, modification of the current agreement does not address the most pressing issues concerning global security. To ensure the security and stability of Iran, the Middle East, and the global community as a whole, we demand that Iran immediately cease any and all activities that sponsor no terrorist organizations. In addition, we call upon them to end ballistic missile research and construction. The world is watching us here for what we do today. Let us move swiftly and resolutely to secure ourselves and the people that we represent. The United States will not sit idly by while nations fund hostile organizations in which ourselves and our allies are. We are resolute in our goals, but we will not shy away from a more direct method for ensuring ours and others' security. We hope that these talks are fruitful and that we hope that together we can bring about a new era of global peace and prosperity. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm members of the 5 plus 1. So I, I am the Foreign Minister for Iran and today as we all know we are here to discuss the fate of the Iran nuclear deal. So I would like to start by saying that we the people of Iran strongly oppose the renegotiation of the agreement. We have been in full compliance with all the stated terms despite of the regulation being stricter for us than other NPD nations. Any change in policy will create regional unrest for us in the Middle East region and the results will, will be in no one's benefit. The US blames us for terrorism, but there is no proof. Attacking Israel with miss missiles would mean hundreds coming down on Tehran itself, so we would never initiate this kind of an activity. We only need to have them for defense by virtue of being surrounded by hostile nations, and in the deal, we did not agree to anything limiting our defense capabilities. As for the sunset clause, we have always maintained that we do not intend to develop nuclear weapons now or in the future, and we stick by it. We value assessment of trade sanctions the most that enable us to be an active part of the world and grow our nation. 
Walking out of the deal midway after 20 months of hard negotiated terms will make the world to spare the US for lacking leadership capabilities. And we expect other nations to do the right thing and show their support in maintaining both peace. Thank you. We'll now hear the remaining nations. As a reminder, uh, your time limits are decreased to approximately one minute. Thank you. To the people of Russia. The Russian Federation also thanks the P5 members and Iran and Germany for gathering here today. Since time is short, let's begin with some facts. First, Americans, let's acknowledge that the IAEA has continually stated that since this deal has been imposed, Iran has continually followed their guidelines. And every inspection has been met with success, and they've proven to be shown that they are following the regulations set forth by yourselves not two years ago. Next, let's move on to what you just brought up in your opening statements. You had a couple key statements. You said first that Iran must stop sponsoring known terrorist activity. And I believe you're referring to Hezbollah and their activity in Yemen. In Yemen, the U.S. is complicit as well. You help Saudi Arabia bomb civilian Houthi targets, an ethnic cleansing to which you are hopeful as well. You next went on to say that you must end the, that Iran must end its ballistic missile program. But let's remember what Iran just said. They are bordered by hostile nations. They're surrounded by Iraq and nuclear, nuclearly armed Pakistan. They have every right to have defensive missiles, much as the United States has, and much as every modern nation has. Because of these factors that you just proposed are, you know, as we just for nation security, we must make a compromise as we go forward in today's uh, crisis situation. Um. Hi everyone, um, my name is Jessica Chow, I'm the Chinese Foreign Minister. I'd like to first thank all representatives for joining us today. Um, the official stance of the Chinese Foreign Ministry is that we strongly oppose any change to the JCPOA. We have strong confidence in the IAEA to monitor any move we brought made towards potential violations of the JCPOA. In light of any two previous violations, we want to be quick to fix the problem. Therefore, showing that they have done enough to justify the removal of the JCPOA and the established more economic sanctions. Most recently, the IAEA has confirmed that Iran has been completely compliant with the JCPOA in terms of scaling down the original facility and therefore the number of Thank you. Thanks, friends. Hello, diplomats. Today I address you on behalf of the Republic of France. We are strongly in favor of the retention of the JCPOA as it was negotiated, not because we believe it is the best agreement or that it went as far as we wanted in our original negotiation on behalf of France, but because we believe that the retention of the agreement, the stability that it brings, is vastly more important than any ephemeral agreement that we could pursue without, we believe, a good chance of success. France does oppose the various military developments that Hezbollah has done, we believe Iran has done. We believe that they are acting to stabilize the region. But we further believe that any attempt to replace the JCPOA, as opposed to beginning new diplomatic channels independently toward those diplomatic objectives, will fail and will seek to undermine the very goals that the JCPOA has laid out. An agreement must have duration, it must have strength in order to work, and renegotiating, backing away from this agreement now, undermines <coughs> every aspect that we require. Thank you, let's hear from the United Kingdom. Thank you for uh, joining today to renegotiate the terms of this agreement. Um, the UK would like to reaffirm their uh, support for the JCPOA. We would also like to emphasize on February 22nd of a month ago, uh, the IAEA has placed Iran in full compliance uh, with the Iran nuclear deal. We also want to uh, share our concern with the United States of Iran's uh, hesitation to allow international uh, monitors into military bases as well as their continued uh, research into ballistic missiles. Uh, UK proposes uh, proposes looking into additional agreements separate and independent of the JCPOA to resolve these issues. Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian Pierkin, and I am the German Foreign Minister. As a Foreign Minister. 
Federal Republic of Germany, I would like to affirm that Germany will make considerable efforts to uphold the joint complementary plan of action. We believe that this agreement is a pivotal path forward as we continue to pursue many efforts of maintaining non cooperation, <coughs> as outlined by the NPT. Considering the recent development of North Korea's nuclear weapons program, it is alarming that the only agreement aimed at preventing the spread of nuclear weapons is being is being called into question. At the current state, walking away from the agreement will discourage North Korea from negotiating the dismantlement of their nuclear program and thus signify the United States' inability to comply with the international agreement. While we do believe that Iran's involvement in Syria and their ballistic missiles program is deplorable, we have recognized the necessity of putting a firewall between this deal and Iran outside activities in order to stay focused on the goal. All countries have attested to their efforts of a nuclear free Iran. And Iran has reaffirmed its commitment to stand by the mission of the UN, the NPT, and the JCPOA. Finally, we would like to acknowledge that Germany has developed economic ties with Iran, and we do not wish to return to the state that occurred before the agreement. Furthermore, we are willing to listen to the additional terms that the United States would like to present, although these underlying comments appear to be directed at their own comments. Thank you. Finally, we'll hear from members of the European Union. Hi. Um, thank you, everyone, for gathering. I'm Marissa, representing the European um, the European Union stands in support of the comments made by our member states. We encourage the United States to maintain their commitment to the JCPOA. However, in light of the decision to not recertify, we wish to assure our colleagues, um, particularly those in Iran, that our commitment to the JCPOA stands regardless of the next decision. Um, although we regret their decision, we believe that we can continue to uphold this agreement with our support. And while we acknowledge various issues that have been addressed, um, we strongly believe the discussion of non nuclear matters um, should be negotiated under existing international um, arms control agreements and are separate. All right, at this point, I invite the United States to present the specific terms of their proposal. I'll add that because we're doing so well on time, uh, that I ask that everyone hold their questions until afterwards. Uh, after the break, I will incorporate that into uh, the the Iran's dedication to their ballistic missile program, heavy water research, and continued effort to show instability in the Middle East provide insight that they are biding their time during this deal to improve their infrastructure and economy such that they can quickly develop nuclear weapons from the sunset block of Europe. This is not a shopping path forward to only for America, but for the Middle East and every member state partisan to the NPT. This path, the current terms of the JCPOA, Flies in the face of decades worth of non proliferation studies and methods. In response, the US has outlined necessary supplements to the JCPOA terms, which uphold the sentiment of peace and stability, and we expect Iranian as well as international cooperation. I'm sorry, didn't, who are you? What is your name? I'm Morgan Fox, the President, <laughs> Assistant President for National Security Affairs. You're Fox. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Lindenfelter. I'm the US Chief Nuclear Negotiator. The JCPOA made many steps in the right direction in terms of maintaining global peace and security, while allowing Iran to further its economic prosperity by reinvolving itself in global economy. On behalf of the United States and our, all parties involved, I'm proud of all that we've accomplished um, so far in the signing and the execution of the previous agreements. Um, despite its many successes, we decided to revisit this plan as we discussed and bring it back on the table for negotiation. We'd like to thank you all for being here today to consider our negotiation and to help. Further strengthen our global order and security. We'd like to add the following from the negotiation. Number one, Iran stopped developing illicit missiles capable of delivering nuclear weapons. In the view of the US, Iran has taken advantage of the, of the weak border of the previous JCPOA and has violated the intent of it by extending its illicit missile capabilities. Before the JCPOA signed, UN Security Council Resolution 1929, Section 9 states that UN Security Council decides that Iran is not undertaking any activity related to ballistic missile capables, uh, ballistic missiles capable of delivering nuclear weapons. As a concession for signing the JCPOA and Security Council Resolution 2231 NXP Section 3 is worded, it's more softer, replacing that, uh, that shell with a what's called upon. To undo this issue, we wish to restore the directive of Resolution 1929 by adding the following wording to the JCPOA agreement. Quote, Iran shall not undertake any activity related to ballistic missiles capable of delivering. Number two, tier JCPOA violation responses. The JCPOA, as it stands, as an all or nothing document, if there is a violation by Iran, all sanctions are supposed to snap back and now be imposed. Similar to Eisenhower's nuclear policy of massive retaliation, this is an all or nothing scenario. 
is that it is not realistic and is unfair to my violations. So, therefore, we propose implementing tiered responses ranging from minor violations and responses to major violations. For example, if I ran the safety of the emergency emergency room, a financial penalty could be imposed. If I ran as purposefully misled IE inspectors and my best in the program is discovered, full sanctions could be imposed. This will result in unfair outcomes on both sides. Number three, cancel sunset clauses. The timeline for making the Iranian Provision efforts as far as to ensure that the two years we'd like to cancel these clauses to ensure that global security for a longer period of adoption could revisit the negotiation in different terms. <coughs> Number four, provisions for terrorism and human rights violations. Iran has sponsored terrorism and has violated human rights on numerous occasions. This destabilizes peace and morality in the international community. To make the JCPOA more all encompassing and to extend the peace and security of the world beyond nuclear proliferation. The U.S. motions to add clauses to the JCPOA that prohibit a human activities to support terrorism in violation of human rights. Thank you. All right, then we will now break uh, while delegations discuss what the U.S. proposed. I would ask a member of the Iranian delegation to let me know if you were ready. Also, we will not necessarily take the entire time. It's an opportunity to respond to the United States. Sunset clauses. Full implementation of the JCPOA leads to Iran being treated like any other NPT member. The way we see it, this is a matter and an agreement of mutual trust that eventually has to lead to Iran being a regular non nuclear NPT member. Iran's total enrichment capacity will remain where it is now until 2028. The enrichment level restriction to 3.67% lasts until 2030. So does the 300 kilogram cap on Iran's low enriched uranium stockpile. Continuous surveillance of centrifuge production sites lasts until 2035, while the monitoring of uranium mines and mills goes on until 2040. Not that it was ever Iran's intention to develop nuclear weapons in the first place, to it strictly goes against our religious, religious faith. These restrictions render weaponization virtually impossible until at least 2030. So as of now, there should be no concern for the United States or any other country of expanding or extending any of these exploration dates. We will forever be required to notify IAEA when we decide to build a nuclear facility. And if all parties adhere to current JCPOA framework, Iran will ratify in 2023 the IAEA's additional pro protocol, which allows short notice inspection of undeclared facilities. No country under the watchful eyes of IAEA has ever um, developed nuclear weapons, and all arms control, control deals have sunset provisions. President Trump's concerns regarding Iran are uncalled for and are undermining the JCPOA and will achieve the opposite of any goals of renegotiation. If the administration cannot accept this, then its real problem is not with the provisions of the deal or Iran's compliance with them, 
It is rather either with the NPT itself or with the nature of the Iranian political system. If so, no new deal would be satisfactory. Thank you. Thank you. We will now pray for four minutes. I will give all the delegations a one minute heads up before we read begin. After which, we will start with the responses beginning with Russia. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I now invite Russia to respond to the big All right, we came here to make a deal. Now we can't speak this. Let's get to it. U.S., you guys want the sunset clause limited? We're down for that. So we're saying no more sunset clause. That's good for you guys. That's good for the rest of the EU. You can go and Iran get you. But Iran should have some security reassurances. After all, they're surrounded by enemies. When we look uh, to Iraq, it's America's fault that Iraq is so bad right now. When we look to Pakistan. It's your fault that Pakistan continues. When we look to Israel, you guys continue to shelter their nuclear program from IAEA inspections. So we've got to make some compromises right here. We need to allow Iran to have that ballistic control program, if only just to secure their security. But put limitations on the ballistic missiles. Make sure that they're not the type that are capable of delivering a nuclear warhead. So that's the proposed deal right now. Elimination of the sunset clause, they get to keep their ballistic missile program. If you do not accept that, Russia has some responses because, as you guys said in your first week, you're going to take direct methods to ensure American security, which we interpret as direct military action against Iran, our ally. If you do that, we'll do a couple things as well. For the EU, we're going to start cutting off gas through our companies, Gazprom and Rosneft. That's going to hike up your gas prices and energy costs. For the US, we're going to move more troops into Syria and southern Georgia, intensifying Russia's uh, military presence in that region. That's if we don't accept the deal. Uh, we await your response. Let's try to find a compromise here. But there's no way that Iran can give up both all of its nuclear energy program and its ballistic missiles in one fell swoop. Thank you, China. Uh, I'm the Chinese chief uh, nuclear negotiator. And uh, I just want to mention to the US that uh, according to Security Council Resolution 2231, the uh, US has a right to instigate a dispute resolution in the case of an Iranian violation of the basic EOA. But the U.S. also has to uh, provide a solid proof of this violation. Um, so we, China, I think it's unreasonable for you to assume that Iran is um, um, developing their ballistic missile technology to uh, load nuclear weapons to and um, use that against the United States and its allies. And uh, it's also unreasonable to believe that um, Iran is supporting terrorist organizations without a solid proof that, um, and we urge that U.S. to share their intelligence with all other parties um, involved in JCPOA if there is a proof that we could rely on. And the Chinese official tradition on um, Iran is that it does not have the capability to develop uh, uh, functional nuclear weapons within the next decade under a uh, very comprehensive current IEA monitoring, and we're also willing to contribute 10 additional billion dollars to um, add to the current uh, safeguard uh, efforts done by the IEA. Thank you. Thank you, friends. I am a chief in the organization of friends, and we do not want to reopen the JCPOA to negotiation at this time. We support the U.S.'s goals that they have asked for, but we have strong reservations that this approach could feasibly bring about those goals. It is difficult enough to reach agreement on the current terms. We believe that these new terms would make agreement almost impossible. And since Iran, as far as we can tell, has upheld its part of the deal so far, it's imperative that the P5 plus one upholds its end of the deal. Also, it is dangerous to set a precedent that we have to renegotiate these deals every time one country has a new president elected. We are open to we are open to negotiating a new deal in addition to JCPOA, but we do not want to reopen negotiation at this time. Also, we feel that Russia is threatening us and we will not respond uh, to that in a productive way. We, we do not think that threats are productive at this point. Yeah, 
Hi, everyone. My name is Daniela Walker, and I'm the United States Defense Minister. I'd like to make three points today. The first is that we agree with Russia and the U.S. and that there shouldn't be any, that we should remove the sunset clauses um, with Iran's desire to ensure peace in the region. We think that the elimination of the sunset clauses in the JCPOA is something that we would strongly desire. My second point is that Iran does have hostile neighbors, uh, and we also agree with Russia that there should be some additional security assurances. However, we would like to help you with those assurances alongside Russia, but we'd like something in return. And which leads to my third point, which is we'd like to introduce a new policy outside of the JCPOA, which we would hear we would help you with your security assurances to help you protect yourself against your hostile neighbors. However, we would need you to stop supporting um, terrorist organizations which, such as Hezbollah and um, the Assad regime in Syria. So we would like to work with Russia and also maybe on outside of the GCPOA um, on this new policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to say that we are in favor of reducing threats, particularly ballistic missile development. And this can be developed without threatening Iran security though. And we are in agreement with China and we're willing to provide funding um, for that case. We do also want to say that the peace clause the United States peace proposal has nothing to do with the agreement, and so we also think that that should not be included in this. And also, due to the complexity of the agreement and the length of time that it took to come to the initial agreement, um, it should be investigated to see how the agreement can be amended as well. And your being seen. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Wong, the expert in nuclear materials, representing the EU. So, as we all know, that JEA has confirmed that Iran has provided values and the known nuclear weapons will be directly responsible. So, the EU will be a training mechanism here, regardless of what the address is done. Um, as to the, the EU Red Lines, the US considered the integrity of this current deal and not change it to any car uh, unilateral, especially when the rest of countries follow the rules. So, as to the sections of the ballistic uh, missile technology for nuclear weapons. So we propose that all, all parties of concern dis discuss this subject, subject on other or and not just as the uh, JCP or okay, uh, this we are discussing there. Thank you. Thank you. This time we'll take a short two minute break and as a reminder right now we are exactly on schedule so we're uh, before we continue to keep the sponsors short. Thank you. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I now invite the United States to respond on the U.S. delegation. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm uh, Grace Bailey, but technically James Mattis, the Secretary of Defense of the United States. Senate. Uh, so because everybody seems to agree with taking out the sunset clauses of the JCPOA, we are proposing that we do that, and everybody um, comes together on that today. We're also proposing a new policy where ballistic missiles um, are directly linked to nuclear weaponry, so we would like to take them out of the agreement there and uh, allow the sale, sale of service-to-air missiles and cruise missiles to run for protection and security against air takers. That's all. All right, that's all. Uh, we'll begin the next break. So as previously, to be on with our man, uh, if you're breaks now around two and a half. Thank you. Now, what we're for for response from Iran? Iran. So. Hello, I'm Mitch Higgis, the head of Iranian intelligence. In response to the United States, uh, we would like to point, uh, reiterate our point number four that we are a sovereign nation. We are pursuing weapons in our own self defense, and so we will not be wielding them. Uh, we will uh, maintain our defense as we see appropriate, and we will not proceed to uh, have that monitored or to give up. Uh, our missile program is in. Support of our aspirations for space research and not uh, militancy, and so we are maintaining that position very strong. 
Also, I would like to respond one more time to the requests of extending <laughs> the expiration dates uh, of some of the main components of the case of Miller. Um, it was brought up by three representatives. Um, there was not wide consensus on this topic as communicated by the United States. However, no uh, delegation has been able to provide any factual or any scientific basis for what any extension of any of these provisions would actually accomplish. Um, as we've said uh, multiple times and was agreed to by all the other delegations, we are in full compliance with all of the requirements and uh, there's no reason to treat us any different as, as any other entity nations beyond that point. Uh, we feel like this is a strong level of disrespect. Uh, we feel like we should be treated as adults and um, as such transition into a regular entity role beyond the expiration of these main provisions. Um, we have held our end of the bargain, and the essential question is will you, the United States, do the same, or will you lose credibility internationally and not be trustworthy for future negotiations? We're also very concerned that if we agree to any uh, amendments, how do we know, how do we have assurance that it will stop right there? How do we know that in half a year you will try to start a negotiation again and will come up with new requests? Um, it does not show a lot of faith in our in our capabilities of, of meeting all of the requirements. All right, so we'll uh, adjourn once more, uh, one final time for three minutes before we get from uh, final responses and closing remarks. <coughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our time limit. And now I invite Russia to begin with their conclusive remarks. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, uh, we've been talking with most of the nations, and I think we have kind of a rough deal. There's still some rough ideas. Um, first thing is that I think all groups agree at this point that the sunset clause should be eliminated. Um, and I think we have a lot of agreement there, even with Iran, um, as long as we give up some stuff to Iran. The second issue is mostly Iran's security guarantee. All groups also agree that Iran is surrounded on all sides by foes. Um, whether nuclear armed or not, um, and we need to find some sort of security guarantee that works for Iran. Our proposed solution, which we talked to a few nations about, was <laughs> ending all embargoes on Chinese and uh, Russian weapons sales to Iran in exchange for Iran giving up their uh, ballistic missile program. Iran said the ballistic missile program is for space research, sure, whatever, but it's threatening to other countries in the region, such as Israel. And Israel will bomb you before they allow you to get ballistic missiles that could have a nuclear bomb at the tip, especially as your foreign policy is still Israel will be on in 20 years. So we need to be diplomatic here. Our security guarantee is that Russia and China can give you surface air missiles that can take down American F-22 Lockheed Lightnings, their most advanced warplane. So we will be able to sell those to you finally. You'll be able to have a shield instead of the ballistic missile sword that you're currently pursuing, which will reassure Israel that will reassure the EU, that will reassure America, and help China and Russia because now we can become trade partners and it will allow you guys to keep your nuclear uh, program instead of getting lost by Israel. China? Uh, hello. Um, so China agrees to the removal of the sunset clause if and only if this, um, the Iranian security guarantee that we just is allowed to approve. So after discussing with both Iran and Russia, we agree. Um, for the sale of Chinese and Russian military weapons to support that. Um, so, in some extent, we're giving into the US and you. However, we are willing to do more monitoring and more in, uh, in the area. So, we've already offered $10 billion for security and technological advancements. We're willing to keep that offer for Iran on the table and work with you. Um, 
So any changes made today, we're, we would like to say would be final, and we support having the U.S. eliminated from any renegotiations and further uh, meetings, except in the case that there is a major event or a major violation of the JCPOA. This will not allow the U.S. to continue changing things as they have requested. Uh, so the JCPOA <laughs> agreements bring stability to the region, and they prevent warfare in the Middle East that will be detrimental to the economies and the securities of all parties here. Uh, so the IAEA has repeatedly certified that Iran is uphold of JCPOA. Only minor violations have been detected so far. They've been corrected immediately. We need to stop treating them like they're some sort of prisoner, like they're a bad kid. They're, and that's officially the Chinese response. Right. I have Joseph Lake. I'm the Minister of uh, Armed Forces for France. Uh, so we are open to the idea of removing sunset clauses as there is a potential risk of proliferation. Uh, once these restrictions are removed, but not at the risk of dismantling the JCPOA altogether. We recognize that Iran has hostile neighbors, uh, allowing and allowing nuclear weapon proliferation with the region will be tantamount to ending the long proliferation system as their neighbors will soon follow suit and likely create their own weapons. Furthermore, France agrees with the US decision to separate its demands from uh, the limitation of ballistic missiles uh, from the uh, JCPOA. And the purpose of the JCPOA is to prevent uh, proliferation of nuclear weapons. And we believe that I just that. We believe the JCPOA should stand as it is until concrete negotiations and resolutions can be made regarding the sunset clauses and hope for further discourse on the matter. Upholding the JCPOA is a key component to prevent future wars. Thank you. Yeah, you good afternoon. I'm Daryl Stretter, as the MI6 Chief for the United Kingdom. Uh, we also like to reiterate that we uh, support the removal of sunset clause. However, uh, we wish for it to be permanently moved with a 15 year renegotiation period. Um, we want to point out again um, that Iran claims that they should be like Rome and PT State. You're not a Rome and PT State. I apologize. You guys were found not in flight in 2003. The purpose of this is for you guys to show positive movement to the gay international trust. You're just not there yet, and we need this level of insurance. However, we want to reiterate that we also uh, understand your concerns for your defense. Uh, however, your security can be assured without ballistic missiles. It's just a disingenuous argument. Ballistic missiles are about payload. If you get something big enough, you can put a new thing. If you get it to space, you can get it to the UK. We don't want that to happen. However, we do support the uh, allowing China and Russia to sell you guys their defense systems that will allow you to protect yourself uh, as a shield as a successful state. Additionally, um, we have no issues with you pursuing your own mutual defense agreements outside of this organization. With uh, nations that are a little bit more uh, available to the US times. Um, on top of that, one of the things that we do demand, in, in, in what we do about, is that uh, the funding for international terrorist groups must cease. Uh, we have become very, very economically tied to the Middle East, and we've actually got over a billion dollars invested already in our We hope to become uh, have closer economic relations in the future as you guys need international trust by maintaining. By your side of this relationship. However, uh, those regimes and those organizations uh, stand in the way of your guys' international uh, stature. Very good. Hi, hey, everyone. I'm Jesse Morris. I'm the uh, German Minister of Defense. Um, the JCPOA has been the United States military's all on this attack on this proliferation of the COVID 34. Ending the JCPOA will you know, throw away all the work that we can come to do. And also, not only for Iran, but also for Germany and Muslim world. Um, fundamentally, we really agree that most missiles are concerned. Um, and while we understand that Iran as a nation needs to defend itself, we need to look as far as our own country to see what happens when uh, you have countries pursue nationalism. Um, and then finally, for sunset clauses, um, we haven't really talked about too much about it, so we don't appreciate everybody saying that it's an agreement. Uh, while we all feel we're moving on it, and the EU? Um, the EU would like Iran to reaffirm the statement that it will never state. Uh, while we agree with any statements that have been made in regards to these missiles, we fundamentally believe that this conversation has gotten off track. I think that the EU is very concerned with the integrity of international agreements and international institutions, and we are very disappointed at the United States' pattern of behavior um, of disregarding these agreements. Uh, we would be very open to negotiating uh, ballistic missiles outside of this group.
government that really is kind of on seeing our economic eyes with Iran, our investment, and we would definitely have more support for this issue. All right, thank you. So we'll now entertain closing remarks from both of these parties meeting with Aaron. I can provide two minutes. That was fun. So based on what we based on the discussion today, it is clear that US is resorting to theories of fear about what we might do when we have all the way been incorporated. We truly appreciate the support shown by Russia today in upholding our sovereignty and this with respect to the opinions of other three countries nations. This deal deserves to stay in place. As every nation of the NPT, we deserve to have our peaceful energy program. We will not renegotiate the sunset clause for now because we want to be treated like everyone else and one time to prove ourselves. During those 10 years, if we are found in violation, then we may be subjected to extension, but till then we are in agreement that there is no reason for us to go back on our terms. But we are open to stronger military collaboration and monitoring with Russia and China and agree with EU that this needs to be a separate topic in, uh, in itself and is outside the scope of this GDA. And with that, we are invested. Uh, so I want to thank everyone, the P5 plus one, for participating in these talks today and coming together to work towards a solution. Uh, the United States is happy with the tentative uh, agreement that we've come to regarding the sunset clauses and the sort of violation, as well as an agreement to reopen uh, talks about domestic missile testing and development uh, in the future. Um, again, uh, thank you for everyone. God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess that concludes the talks and uh, all of this to the current industry. Give yourselves a big hand. So, Mr. Moderator, could you send me an email with the explicit terms that have been agreed to here? That would be useful. And then um, I'm asking you to submit a one page memo. You can do it um, hard copy now. If you don't have it available, email it to me, nnoc.berkeley.edu. One page memo with a possible one page of end notes afterward. It didn't have to, didn't, you weren't clairvoyant, so it should not include necessarily what was agreed to at the simulation. Yes. If we're submitting the one page now, do you still want us to send something additional about the end notes? Or things? The, the end notes are purely optional. So 